all you need to know to pass the FRC of the part 1 exam. So I'll talk about how I passed FRC of the part 1 exam while studying and balancing work full time as a non-resident doctor working in a non-ophthalmology job. And all of this before I actually entered ophthalmology training. Now, FRC of the part 1 is one of the most difficult exams given by ophthalmologists here in the UK. Oftentimes considered the most difficult exam by ophthalmologists who are working in the UK. And so today I will take you through all the resources that I use to pass this exam. I will also tell you about the mistakes I made in my first attempt to give this exam and finally what got me to pass this exam the second time. The good thing about FRC of the part 1, if you said it before your application to ophthalmology, it gives you three precious points. So I think it's absolutely worth it if you can do the part 1 before you enter training. Not only does it make your life a bit easier once you get into training, you don't have to worry about the most difficult exam in ophthalmology in the UK, but you also have those precious three points that you can now use to boost your application even further. I will leave the Amazon links to all of these resources in my description below so you can check that out. And as always, as promised, at the end, I will leave you with some top tips which can make your life even a little bit more easier and help you pass this exam once and for all. Now before we begin a disclaimer about medical education resources. Now medical education is an evolving space and every day every month there is a new resource coming out to help you deal with your exams and so on and so forth. I will be talking about the resources that help me personally that I use to pass this exam myself. I'm not sponsored by any of the resources that I will be mentioning. These are purely the resources which got me through this exam and I'm sharing them with you now for your benefit. All right, so let's get into it. To give you some context about my study setting and how I was studying when I studied for this exam, let's begin talking about the job during which I was actually studying this. So before I entered training, I was working as a resident doctor in an acute stroke department. Now that my job entailed the ward jobs, but my job also entailed doing the acute stroke on calls because I wanted to get into ophthalmology in my free time. That would be after the on calls, after my day job, weekends, holidays days, that's when I would fit in the study time to study for part 1. I sat the FRC of the part 1 exam twice. The first time I missed the pass mark by 9 points and this is why I'm also in a very good position to tell you what not to do and I will also be taking you through the things that I think I could have done better on my first time around. So before we begin my message to you, I did all of this while I was working in a hyper acute stroke job. So if someone like me who's working a busy on call job in the morning and studying in his free time can do it, so can you. And so for my second attempt, I changed all of those things that I could have done better and I passed the exam with a much better score. And as many of you can understand, being doctors on visas, we often don't have the luxury to take time off work just to study for exams or prepare our portfolios. And so we have to find time wherever we can to fit in the study that we need to do. And that's what I did. What is exactly tested in part one? Now part one is a basic sciences exam relevant to ophthalmology. It includes subjects like anatomy, immunology, biochemistry, microbiology, but it also contains some ophthalmology specific subjects like optics. Now, given that many of us haven't really read optics properly as part of medical school, this is going to be a subject which needs dedicated time to understand stand and work out. Whereas anatomy and optics are by far the most commonly represented subjects in this exam. The mistake would be not to focus on the other subjects as well. And this is one of the mistakes that I made in my initial preparation. I had heard online that anatomy and optics were heavily represented. And so in my first try, I had focused mainly on anatomy and optics, studying them more than the other subjects like pathology, investigations. And I was taken by surprise in the exam when investigations were heavily represented as well. And so don't believe anybody who says that anatomy and optics are the most heavily represented and you can get by by doing these two subjects. Secondly, some of the resources I used for my first try, even though they were mainstream resources, were not good at all. So I'm giving examples of iDocs question bank, or there's an Oxford part one basic sciences book, which is also not much use, I would say. Now, after addressing those mistakes and changing my resources, my preparation drastically improved and as a result, my exam score also improved. So why don't we just dive straight into talking about the resources which actually helped me pass the exam and got me the good score that I wanted. And before I mention these resources to you, keep in mind, don't try to read these resources front to back immediately. There's a way to read these resources. Not all of the books and question banks or things that I'm to mention will need to be done front to back all the way through. You sometimes have to pick and choose what you do from each resource. And that is what I will tell you going forward. I'm going to split the resources into three sections, textbooks, question books, and online resources. So starting with essential textbook, number one, 
Elkington Optics. This comes as no surprise to anyone. This is the most famous optics book to study for FRC of the part one. Now, this book is a comprehensive book which covers most of optics that you need to know relevant to ophthalmology for the part one exam. It is a difficult read and most people that I recommend this book to, I always tell them in your first pass of this book, do not expect to learn everything. It is the second pass where things start to make sense. So yes, you need to read this book multiple times. It's not going to make sense the first time but ultimately it's a time tested book and it works well for the frc of part one everything you need to know in most cases will be here next important book which is another textbook is snell's clinical anatomy of the eye this is not your comprehensive snell's clinical anatomy this book is entirely specific to the eye it is another essential textbook for this exam it is much easier to read thankfully compared to elkington and i found this book really useful for the exam and similar to elkington i would recommend reading this book multiple times so twice at least more times if you have the time it has excellent pictures it has good descriptions it has a nice embryology section as well this should be an essential part of your frc of part one exam those were the main two textbooks that i need you to read front to back multiple times the next section that i promised would be the question books now this next book is called john ferris mcq book for the basic sciences it is also a very comprehensive and detailed book it prevents information in the form of questions even though it's represented as questions but the explanations and the way the questions are framed make it a very comprehensive and detailed book to read this is one of those books that i told you earlier you shouldn't be reading front to back because it has a massive anatomy section in it now obviously you're doing your anatomy from snell so i wouldn't recommend you repeating the entire anatomy revision in john ferris as well so i would recommend instead choosing the subjects that you've not done so well using the other resources that i will mention today for example anatomy is not not something that i would recommend doing from ferris if you've already done that from snell's clinical anatomy physiology though is a good section to do from john Ferris. So at least that should be something that you thoroughly do from this book. And because of the style of the way the questions are put, treat it more like a textbook rather than a question book. Next question book I want to tell you about is the FRC of part one, 400 questions by Nikki Hall and Robert Pedden. This is a fantastic book and I really like it. It's more of a comprehensive style book covering most of the FRC of part one syllabus in the form of SBAs and CRQ questions. Now CRQ questions are no more part of the actual FRC of part one exam. It's only the single best answers but the reason i recommend this book is more because it covers the syllabus quite well and it's an excellent revision source near the end of the exam this book i would treat it more as a question book rather than a textbook as for what i did i did this book near the end of my exam preparation and it helped really summarize and put everything together near the end of the exam that's it for the question book section now i will come to the online resources section where a lot of the other important resources are starting with the one question bag that you must be wondering i would recommend no, it is not iDocs, it is eFRC off. So I initially tried iDocs for my first attempt and I will come to small review of iDocs question bank at the end. But in my second attempt, I changed strategy and looked for a more comprehensive question bank and that turned out to be eFRC off the question bank. The user interface is very similar to past medicine for those of us who have used past medicine for other exams like, I don't know, MSRA or MRCP. So it's good to have that sort of familiarity continuing into another question bank. It is much better than iDocs docs it has much more comprehensive explanations original diagrams which are really good i learned a lot from the explanations and from what i know they keep the questions up to date and the knowledge up to date which is of utmost importance i finished this question bank twice before the actual exam there are loads of questions easily more than 2000 questions in it so don't worry about running out and yes i would recommend if you can finish this question bank twice to give you a good stronghold on all the subject topics now there are subjects in the frc of part one the smaller subjects like biochemistry microbiology these are the ones which i have almost solely done from the question bank and i've not used any of the bigger resources and textbooks for this and so this is why you need a good comprehensive question bank which does the job and that is eefrc off and so to be honest this is the only question bank i would recommend to you to get subscription for as it did quite a good job for me to cover everything and no i'm not sponsored by eefrc off although i would most welcome a sponsorship shout out to eefrc off but no honestly i found it really useful that's why i'm telling it to you now don't waste your time on idocs it's not worth it next inotes.com now this is another lifesaver for me this is an online set of comprehensive summarized short form notes for everything you need to know to study for part one exam it's sort of like think of them like a set of key notes without detailed explanations of the entire syllabus relevant to frc of the part one and so this is a website where you'll find all of this as i said there are some
summarized and they're sharp and they're quick that they do not replace the text that I've initially mentioned. What I think this is essential for is to give you a framework to base your entire study on and to revise at the end as well. It is also good to cover the shorter and smaller subjects which have such a few representation in the actual exam that it would be a waste of time to actually read into comprehensive texts for example just to do biochemistry. For those of us who have done USMLE part 1, there is a very famous book called First Aid for the Part 1. Think of it as another version of that similar book but for ophthalmology where everything is bullet points and key points, short and sharp and to the point but you will need another text to supplement and use full explanations and to actually understand things if you're looking for that. Next we come to something which is not well known but I believe is prime importance and definitely made a difference in my own understanding of optics for part one. I'm referring to Dr. Hunter's optics lectures on YouTube. Dr. Hunter is an American ophthalmologist who does these massive optics seminar for the students who are sitting the American ophthalmology exams. The lecture on YouTube you'll often find is more than five hour long but because it's very audiovisual and it shows nice images and he has great explanations it really did wonders for me to get my initial fundamental understanding of optics in place before I actually read Elkington. So I would actually recommend you to actually go through Dr. Hunter's lecture before you actually read the optics book that I mentioned earlier by Elkington. This will really help put things together and it will help your understanding and get you to see these images and diagrams that Dr. Hunter uses which I think were really useful for me. And Dr. Hunter has done this on multiple occasions and in different years so on YouTube when you search for it I would recommend you to find the latest lecture and then do that. Next I'll talk about the Chua MRC of the website. Now this is a again a very well known website but it's very poor in terms of user friendliness it's not a great website to scroll through but don't let that deter you from actually using some of the sections because it is actually quite good in these the pathology and investigation section especially is where I want you to focus yourself on and do it well don't get lost in all of the rest of the material that is present in this website it is not relevant maybe in your free time but not for the exam and finally the last online resources that I wanted to mention to you were Google images and YouTube now I cannot tell you how many times I found excellent explanations of things that I was unable to understand on a random YouTube video or an anatomy photograph or diagram I found in Google images which was everything in trying to help me understand what was going on so I used a lot of that as well. So now that we've covered the good resources and the resources I think will get you to pass the exam for sure let me tell you about the ones that I don't like. Now, As many of you might have discovered who are applying for the part one exam iDocs is a very popular recommendation on public forums. Now I honestly don't know why that is the case it's a poor question bank at this stage and time. I use this question bank on my first attempt for part one and a few things which are glaringly wrong with this question bank is number one the guidelines are outdated so oftentimes you'll notice that it is quoting guidelines which have already gone out of use years and years ago and you already have new guidelines in place. You also have minimal explanations which don't do well in trying to get you to understand things properly. The questions are not representative of the actual exam as well and so I feel this was one of my biggest mistakes in my first attempt was actually giving some attention to this question bank. I should not have. And so to avoid yourself the disappointment, don't subscribe to this. In all honesty, the authors who are doing the question bank should do their part in keeping things up to date and actually providing useful content if they want people to pay for this. And so I don't think it's right for you to waste your money on this at this stage. Hopefully if, if it gets better down the road, it can be given a shot. But as of yet, I wouldn't subscribe to this. Next, Oxford Basic Sciences book for ophthalmology. I understand that this was created as a sort of a helpful quick short guide for doctors interested in doing the part one exam but it falls quite short. The loads of mistakes, grammatical, conceptual explanations are not good enough, tries to condense a very detailed curriculum and syllabus into a quite small book. I used this in my first preparation attempt as well and it did not represent the exam, it did not help me with the exam so I wouldn't again waste my time with this. Next Forrester's Basic Sciences book. Now this book is actually quite comprehensive and it's well done, the book is good but I think it's overkill for the exam. It's too much. There's too much information and you could well be using your time more efficiently if you focus rather on the books that I mentioned earlier and the question bank that I mentioned earlier. And finally, I will show these all to you together so you can screenshot or keep them together to sort of see what you should read and what you should not read in this screenshot. So finally, coming to the final top tips to make your life a bit easier, focus on the high yield subjects the most. Make sure you've got that down. What are the high yield subjects? Subjects, anatomy, optics, investigations, immunology, pathology, and physiology. And so trust me, if you get excellent scores in all of these subjects, you're almost guaranteed to pass. 
if you want to score even better then you have to do well in the other smaller subjects as well like biochemistry statistics pharmacology next time frame you're looking at to actually prepare for this exam and so if you were like me you're working in an on-call job you have a daytime job you're managing full-time work with study and i would say about five to six months time if you want to actually score well in the first go itself if you're looking and you have the option to take time off just to study i would say less time so you would probably need three to four months of good study to actually sit for this exam so that's it for today this was a guide in how you can pass this exam one of the most difficult exams in ophthalmology but trust me it's all worth it at the end when you come out of the exam and you get that result and you realize you don't have to sit this exam again so that's it for today make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want me to keep making content for ophthalmologists and non-ophthalmologists but relevant to ophthalmology leave a comment if there's anything in particular you would like me to talk about or address and if you would like to see my latest video you'll find it right here and i will see you in the next video